All right, welcome back to our Cytoscape hands-on, which we will then also soon face over into the working in group session. I had uh, one very good question during the break, which I actually wanted to share with all of you anyway, and that is how to use the bypass function. So you may have seen now here in this mapping um, environment, you can like select like a lot of different things, right? And I definitely don't have time to go through all of them, but one general function is that there is like this default mapping and then bypass sections. So the default value just like changes the value for like all the nodes, right? And then like the mapping here would then, you know, map like the style of a node or edge according to like some metadata. And then there's a bypassing. And that is very useful if you do data exploration in your network. So let's say we find like one really cool new biomarker here with the mass uh, 258. And now I wanna like always find that again quickly, right? So like the easiest thing for me would to like be to mark that like with a color or to make it bigger or so. So now obviously it all is constrained by like the mapping, but if I select one single node and now I go here under size in this bypass tab, and I just like put in any value here, let's say 100. Then I can like bypass the mapper and then just make this bigger by default for this single note or any other note if I click on it. And yeah, that works for color, size, whatever category. So yeah, that is pretty useful. So, all right. But now what I wanted to do with you in the last couple of minutes is uh, bring in that additional layers of annotation. And till a couple of weeks ago, I think it was pretty challenging to do that. It was serious because you had to juggle like the table and split some, some column strings. But fortunately, thanks to Marcus, Fleming, Kai, and, and the others, they finally fulfilled our, our wish and provided the feature number now as an individual column. And this is kind of like the anchor that like pulls together like all like these different informations. And again, I would encourage you to, you know, like open these files in the editor or Excel to actually take a look at it so that you understand the, the underlying structure. So um, yeah, again, if we look at like our uh, feature table, right? so there's this uh, uh, quant table that you get out from, from MZMine. Oh. Then there is like this row ID here at the beginning, right? And that is just like a, a number. So it's obviously it's not as nice as in Excel. Let me try that again. I'll try and drop this in here. Hopefully, it will work now. Yes. Okay. So this is our feature table, right? So what you get out of MZ mine, and there's this row ID. Then there's the MZ retention time, and then all like the peak area information here for like the different samples. So it's basically one big data frame. And this first row number here, feature number or scan number, that is our connecting thing. And if you open the MGF file, that I think also should be outputted here from GMPS, but you also got it yesterday, you know, from um, from MZMine. If you open this also in Notepad, then if it loads, then we should actually see that there is like this um, scan number. I don't know what it is. Sorry, the editor. So, so now that's basically how your MS MS MGF file looks, right? And there is like the scan number. And here, actually interesting, there's a lot of like empty ones. But then at some point there is also some that have like some ion information here. So those are the different masses with the intensities. But in the header, right, there is like the scan number. And that is the same number as 
like this feature number here, right? And that is the connecting thing. And also in the network, that is like the connecting information. So now if we look at the serious outputs, hopefully we'll just download it. Um, here under um, compound identification, cannabis compound summary, and also formula identification. So those are like the summary files you could download from Sirius on the GitHub page here. So there's the, yeah, these different files, right, from Sirius. Or if you run it by yourself, then you should be able to generate those, those summaries. Then, yeah, like the same way, you should be able to, to open this in Excel. And then we can actually look at that information. And now, I, by default, I don't remember how the column header is called, so I actually need to look at it <laughs> to select the, the right one. And fortunately, we have Marcus and Fleming here to help us out, if not. But yeah, like beautifully, the last one here now, feature ID has like the same number. Right. So now, hopefully, what we can do in Cyberscape is the same way as I did it for the Futurama network, earlier, if I go to file, import, table from file, I can directly select now this output files and bring them directly into Cyberscape. So now let's try this. So here, let's try formula identifications and then open. And now I just need to tell it which one here is the key. Right? And then it wrongly selected the other one. So I want to actually here have feature ID to be the key. And then it does like the VLOOKUP or merge thing and actually merges now all the serious information into a cytoscope. Um, I choose like the formula identification. So these are basically the molecular formula information from, from serious. But I could do now the same thing with like the compound identification. So this is the um, CSI finger ID outputs or was the cannabis summary. Right. Let's, let's try it again with like the CSI finger ID stuff. So again, import table from file. And then I select here compound identifications. And then, okay, confidence rank, that's not what I want, right? I want the feature ID to be the key. Now, I think I just have to watch out that there's no duplicate header names that could result in some trouble. But apparently, yeah. So now I have the molecular formulas from Sirius and the um, uh, in silico structure matches from CSI finger ID. And now, as I'm very adventurous, <laughs> I'm even going to try the cannabis class level annotation. And then the same way, you know, I need to change this key here to the feature ID column and then import it. And then also this beautifully is merged into Cyberscape. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Um, and now I can like add this information into like the network. So give it a try now, especially like when you work with your groups in a in a second, because yeah, this is really this is really useful. And now I just want to do one little exercise, and this is like load in other information, right? Because now if we would do some stats downstream and we would use like a random forest model to classify our data between, I don't know, control and um, a treatment group, right? I could also load in mean degree accuracy and values like that to highlight what actually matters for my biological question. And I think bringing like this multi-layers in here, this is, this is really powerful and it can be whatever, right? It can be bioactivity for your natural product discovery study or whatnot. And all you need is like this, um, yeah, uh, feature ID here, right? So if I would build up from here, let's say, I'm just gonna quickly delete this and say, we wanna here now use our fantasy 
mean decreased accuracy from our random forest. And this is a whatever one, two, three, and so on. Then I got just going to save this now as a new um, CSV or TSV file. And then I can the same way import it to status it. And then, yeah, the same way as before, go to import table from file, now select this. And now set feature ID again as key, right? And load in that additional layer. And now here in this table view, you know, it should appear now. And well, I mean, this was just like some sorted values, but they should appear in here. So feel free to play around with it and to explore and, you know, be creative with whatever applications you have. Um, one last thing in terms of add-ons, I wanna quickly check because particularly for like the CSI finger ID outputs is very useful is the canvas add-on. Because in addition to draw pie charts and display masses, you can also draw structures directly on top of these nodes. And therefore, yeah, here I have already like the Kimo Informatic Tools Canvas installed. If not, you can go to like the um, app store and install apps. Well, actually. And then yeah, here, install Canvas. And then technically I could for a few nodes, just like display like the structure. And all I need is like smile strings in one of like these columns. I think it comes with the CSI finger ID results. I just need to find out a, yeah, here, right column. So there's a smiles one, right? And then under apps, um, can with my tools, paint structures on all nodes. Should hopefully do the trick or not. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think sometimes for larger networks, it struggles, but um, we can try it for only one. Oh, weird, it just appeared. Um, let's try it again. So now you can see here, it directly shows the um, structure. Obviously it's covered by the label. So if I go to style and remove the label, then now hopefully I will see nicely directly the structure. Think about it. So yeah, again, there's tons of possibilities inside Escape. Feel free to explore and, and use. And um, if you find out, something exciting new, but also feel free to, to email us and tell us, uh, for example, how to make labels of like the pie charts. I still don't actually know how to do this.